Leonardo di Ser Piero da Vinci. He is one of the greatest artists and geniuses of the world who brought the Renaissance art to its peak, known not only for his artistic structure, but also for his research and inventions in various fields. He was born on April 15, 1452 in Anciano. Although there is no concrete evidence, it is speculated that Leonardo's mother, Caterina, was a Middle Eastern slave belonging to his father, Piero. His father married his first wife, Albiera, the year Leonardo was born. Leonardo was taken care of by his mother when he was a baby, and when his mother got married to someone else and settled in the neighboring town, he lived in his grandfather's house, where his father rarely visited, he would occasionally go to Florence to his father's house. He was accepted into the family because he did not have children from his father's first wife, but he did not receive love from anyone in the family except his uncle Francesco. Living in Vinci until the age of 14, Leonardo went to Florence with his father in 1466, after his grandparents died one after another. Since children out of wedlock were forbidden to go to university, they did not have a chance to study at university. During his early years, Leonardo da Vinci progressed quickly in arithmetic and geometry, surprising his teachers with the questions he asked. He was noted for his sharp wit and abilities even at a young age. He was also interested in music. But in his childhood, his favorite occupation was painting. When his father realized this and showed Leonardo's paintings to Andrea del Verrocchio, the famous painter and sculptor of the period, Verrocchio took him as an apprentice. Besides Leonardo Verrocchio, he had the opportunity to work with famous artists such as Lorenzo di Credi and Pietro Perugino. Andrea del Verrocchio insisted that his students not only paint but also understand anatomy in the workshop. Thus began Leonardo's education on anatomy and the human body. He also learned to play the lyre and was playing really well. Leaving Florence in 1482, he entered the service of Sforza, Duke of Milan. His letter, in which he explained that he could make bridges, weapons, ships, bronze, marble and clay sculptures to enter the service of the Duke, was considered the most extraordinary job application of all time. Leonardo worked for the Duke of Milan for 17 years until the city was taken by the French in 1499. Not only did he paint and sculpt and organize festivals for the Duke, he also designed buildings, machinery, and weapons. Between 1485 and 1490, he was interested in nature, mechanics, geometry, flying machines, as well as architectural structures such as churches, castles and canals, studied anatomy and trained students. His interests were so wide that he couldn't finish most of the things he started. He developed the habit of recording his works and drawings in a notebook between 1490 and 1495. These drawings and notebook pages have been collected in museums and personal collections. One of these collectors is Bill Gates, who collected the manuscripts of Leonardo's works in the field of hydraulics. The young man, whom he took under his protection when he was 10 years old in 1490 and named Salai, was with him for 26 years, but this young man, known as his student, did not produce any artistic products. John Giacomo Caprati de Orino, also known by the nickname Salai or Ayel Saleno, was described by Giorgio Vasari as a radiant and beautiful youth with wonderfully curly hair that Leonardo greatly enjoyed. Ayel Saleno started working as a maid in Leonardo's house in 1490, when he was only 10 years old. The relationship between Leonardo and Ayel Saliano is not considered easy. In 1491, he described Leonardo I.L. Saleno as thief, liar, stubborn and nasty and compared him to the little devil. Nevertheless, Illinois Saleno remained in Leonardo's service for 26 years as his companion, servant, 
an assistant. Leonardo continued to call Ayel Saleno the Little Devil. Ayel Saleno, drawn naked in Leonardo's artist notebooks, is depicted as a handsome and curly-haired adolescent. Some scholars suggest that Ayel Saleno was the Vitruvian Man. When the city was taken by the French in 1499, Leonardo left Milan and began looking for a new protector, traveling in Italy for 16 years. He worked for many people, many of them left their work unfinished. It is said that he started working on the Mona Lisa in 1503, which is considered one of the best paintings in human history. After completing this painting, he never left it with him and carried it with him on all his travels. Upon the news of his father's death in 1504, he returned to Florence. He struggled with his brothers for the right of inheritance, but his efforts were inconclusive. However, his beloved uncle left all his wealth to him. Then, in 1506, Leonardo met 15-year-old Count Francesco Melzi. Melzi described Leonardo's feelings for her as a very passionate and extremely burning love in a letter. Ayel Saleno had to accept that Melzi was always with Leonardo during these years. Melzi became Leonardo's first student and then his life partner. Also, Leonardo da Vinci's, it is known that France presided over the Priory of Chaun, whose establishment dates back to ancient times, between 1510 and 1519. Leonardo's interest in young men was also discussed in the 16th century. In an article written by John Paolo Lomazzo in 1563, Leonardo was featured as one of the protagonists and said, You should know that love between men is a virtue that brings men together with various feelings of friendship. This makes them more masculine and courageous is the word of Leonardo. It is also claimed that Leonardo dislikes physical contact, the reproductive activity and everything connected with it is so disgusting that people would soon disappear without pleasant faces and emotional tendencies was later analyzed by Sigmund Freud and Freud believed that Leonardo was frigid. Has ruled. Leonardo was an honest and morally sensitive person, as evidenced by Leonardo's work and early biographers. His respect for life shows that he was a vegetarian at least at one stage of his life. The basis of Leonardo's interest in the human body is the study of figure sketches. He did not see the external observations as sufficient to draw the human being as vividly as possible and as close to reality as possible. Anatomy research has become an area of interest in itself, to which he spends more and more time. He approached the human organism as a perfect machine whose working principles he was curious about. The texts of the ancient physician Galen, who formed the basis of the medical science of that period, could only partially satisfy his curiosity. He began to ask every question that came to his mind. Leonardo was clarifying what he saw by drawing. He was revealing the details of anatomy with cross-sections, detailed views and drawings from different angles. His drawings are extremely clear, despite inaccuracies in some details. He did not dissect a human cadaver for drawing a baby in the womb, he examined cows and adapted the results he obtained from there to human anatomy. He continued to work in anatomy and physiology, but the Pope forbade him from working on cadavers. He lived in Rome between 1513 and 1516 and was involved in various projects developed for the Pope. He lived in Rome between 1513 and 1516 and took part in various projects developed for the Pope. Upon the death of his patron Giuliano de' Medici in 1516, he received an invitation from King Francis I to become the chief painter, engineer, and architect of France. He settled in the mansion prepared for him, right next to the royal palace near Amboise, southwest of Paris. The king, 
who had great admiration for Leonardo, would often visit and chat. Leonardo da Vinci, who was paralyzed in his right arm, focused on scientific studies rather than painting. He was assisted by his friend Melzi. Salai, on the other hand, had abandoned him after he came to France. Leonardo died at his home in Amboise on May 2, 1519, at the age of 67. It is rumored that he died in the arms of the king. In his will, he left the main part of his inheritance to Melzi. He was buried in the Church of St. Florentine in Amboise. Since you've watched it so far, you can click the subscribe button under the video and like the video. See you in the next video.